Hi, welcome to this new video of your, with yours truly, Queen Choma from queenchomamedia.com. I'm with you right now to basically give you the seven reasons why the money has stopped. The money, like why it suddenly stopped flowing in your business or your life. So you might just be like, oh my goodness, like money was flowing. I was receiving money. I'm getting, you know, new clients, new sales, new, getting lots of business. You're, you're getting money opportunities. You're receiving um, it could be financial shifts, financial breakthroughs, financial provision, income. It could be from the north, east, south, and west. It could be in your job. Like many of you have multiple streams of income, but this is definitely more for you if you're an entrepreneur. Okay, so especially kingdom, Chris, like kingdom women, Christian women that are in business, or you're online marketing yourself. You could be marketing products and services. Um, it could be that you have a t-shirt line. You could be a freelancer, a freelance photographer. It could be a videographer. You could be a professional dancer. Okay. You could be a professional model, could be a TikTok star, you know, um, you could be a business coach, a branding coach, a social media manager. So if you're wondering like, why is it that the money slowed down? This is for you and you're with yours truly, Queen Choma from queenchomamedia.com. Okay, so I'm going to share with you why, just based on what I've learned about money, what the Lord has taught me, what God has been teaching me about money. I have signed up to so many like coaching programs and business courses. I've read loads of books and read loads of articles, watched lots of videos, listened to loads of podcasts, and I've discovered a lot about money and I've learned a lot about like how money works and stuff, like how um, finances work. And so I know how to bring in that money, but at the same time, I also know that there's times where it, when it just stops and usually it's for a reason. So I'm going to share with you seven reasons why it might just suddenly stop. Okay. And by the way, guys, I'm launching a brand new, I've got something really special that I'm launching, which I'll talk about in the middle of this and at the, at the end as well. Um, but let me just dive in. So look out for my special announcement. It's something amazing that you can join me for that it's going to be so life-changing for Christian women, kingdom women, women of faith, Christian women entrepreneurs. So if you're interested, definitely check it out. Um, yeah, look at the look in the description box as well for details. Okay, the first thing is a poverty mindset. So the money is stopped because your money stuff has come up. Your money, your money mindset is is a poverty one, right? So this doesn't apply to all of you, but it, it can happen to a lot of us because a lot of us have been through different experiences with money. Maybe um, a memory has come up where you like you could be triggered financially. Maybe a memory came up where you lost money once. Maybe you borrowed money to somebody and they didn't pay you back. It could be that you um, are getting stuck because you're about to go to that next financial level and it now feels uncomfortable. Um, there is such a thing as like having a plateau. There's also such a thing as and a plateau is where you just sort of like you peak, you don't go further than where you're meant where, where you're meant to go. So for example, if you um, only only make 3000 every single month, that is a plateau. Like if it's just happening every single month, it means you're peaking, you're sort of like your your glass ceiling is 3k. But if you, you know, bust through, and then you make 3500 and you make 4000, then that means you're actually having the shifts. And sometimes money can be up and down as well. Like one month, you make this much money, another month, you make another amount of money. So it just depends. But what actually is this poverty mindset? So it's thinking thoughts like money doesn't grow on trees. We've heard a lot of these sayings, more money, more problems. Have you ever heard of that one before? Um, thinking that God does not want to bless you financially. You might be thinking, you know, God is the one that's stopping my money. God doesn't want to bless me financially. He only blesses the celebrities. He doesn't want to bless me. Like these types of thoughts are blocking your financial abundance because the Bible says, as a man thinketh, so is he or so does he become. Thinking thoughts like if if I have money, then no one else will have money. So maybe you feel like if you have money, then that's going to take from people in the world. They won't have money because you've got money. You feel like your abundance is somebody else's poverty. Maybe you think things like you're afraid to earn money in case people ask you for more money. You know, there is this thing like when you have money, it seems as if everybody knows and everybody wants your money, right? Like the money starts just like slipping right through your hands. And so you might be afraid that if you make a lot of money, you're going to attract a lot of people asking you for money. You might be afraid to lose money. That could be another thing. Maybe you've lost money before. Maybe you, you know, had a bad business deal and you lost a lot of money. You might have lost your car. You like maybe you bought a nice fancy car and then you had to sell it because you became broke. And so it could be that. 
So maybe you're afraid and that's blocking your money. It could be that you're afraid that you're going to squander money or you may just think you're not a good money manager. You might say things like, oh, I'm not good with money. I'm terrible with money. I'm bad at managing money. It's just really another block that you're using to stop yourself from earning the kind of money that you deserve. And then it could be money dramas and money traumas. Maybe you were evicted once. Maybe you are afraid Maybe you heard your, fra- your friend that was a millionaire, she lost all her money, or you've seen some stuff in the, in the celebrity world. And um, one of the things that's happening right now, and we're not going to mention the celebrity that it is, but a, a celebrity has got a lot of lawsuits right now. And this celebrity is going downhill financially because they're paying out a lot of money, like, I mean, tons of money. And they're literally, they could go bankrupt, or maybe, I don't know, it could be worse than that. Andrew Tate is another example of this. He had a lot of money. He said he had about 100 million and and they and he said the remaining government took all that money from him. Now, I don't know if that's true. That's alleged. But obviously, many of you know he was arrested and put in prison for a while um, and they apparently took all his money. So that is an example of how money can just be taken from somebody, even if um, it, like they, they it could be legal suits. It could be the government that take the money. It could be. Um, tax collectors or whatever it would be, right? So those traumas, those that money trauma could be affecting you. Okay, so number two, you're not marketing your products and services. It could be that you're not marketing at all, or you're not marketing effectively, or you're not marketing enough. So, you know, one of the things my coach once told me, one of my co- coaches that is a millionaire coach, she basically said, if you're not selling, if you're if you're not bringing in the money, basically, you need to be more salesy. You know, one of the biggest fears of entrepreneurs is to be too salesy. But you can sometimes not be salesy enough, and that's why you're not making money. Whatever you do to make money to bring in a client or a sale, that is what you must keep doing. You like if you've never made any money online, or if you've if you just like if you've been promoting your products and services, but no one has bought anything and it keeps happening you're not being salesy enough. You're not speaking to enough people directly. You're not really having those sales conversations. You're not tackling those sales objections. You're not jumping on enough sales calls or discovery calls. So you just need to up the game with this. You've got to be passionate about selling because you know there's a saying that selling is serving. And it's about selling those products and services because guess what? If you're not selling your products and services, you literally have an expensive hobby. Your business is an expensive hobby. It is a time consuming hobby. Because you're putting out all these offers, you're doing all this promotion and nothing is coming in the bank. And that's what we've got to change. That is what we've got to be um, unavailable for. Like I'm not available for a, a, um, a charity business, right? Unless I want a charity business. My business is not a charity, right? But yes, I do do charity work. I mean, I used to be, I actually won three different charity awards, guys. In case you don't know that, I was Miss. Charity Kent for Face of Europe, Miss Charity UK for Face of Europe, and I was also Miss Charity, not not for Face of Europe, I was Miss Charity UK Face of Europe, and then I was Miss Charity Europe, and that was in the Face of Europe competition as well. So guys, I used to compete in beauty pageants, and I won all these different crowns, titles, and awards. I even won a glass award for my um, charity or uh, my charity fundraising as well, um, when I won the Miss Charity Europe Award and crown and title. Woo! <laughs> love that, love. Okay, guys, so yeah, it was really good. It was a wonderful time in my life. It opened so many doors for me to be a beauty queen. And then I had, I had my own beauty pageant business. Um, and I worked with lots of beauty queens and models. So I kind of like did the, the pageantry myself, like I competed and I was winning all these crowns, titles and awards and learning how this industry worked. And then I went along and became a pageant director and organized all these pageant events. And I guess that's part of the lifestyle God has given me um, to be able to experience that like kind of glamorous lifestyle in the beauty pageant world. And then I got into TV presenting, had TV presenting world where I'm interviewing all these dignitaries and high profile people and politicians. And, you know, I'm I'm working with celebrities, um, you know, meeting celebrities, shall I say. Um, But then I did also work with celebrities as well. And I guess the reason why I'm sharing this is because me putting myself out there opened a lot of doors for me. Okay. So me promoting myself, putting myself out there, applying for opportunities. I got myself out there and and you've got to do the same for yourself. We're going to talk about publicity in a bit, but, um, but yeah, you've got to market yourself. Uh, if you're the face of your brand, you've got to market yourself. It could be going for more photo shoots. Um, like I said, selling more products and services, being more visible on social media, but being strategic as well, because guess what? There is a fight for your time. And one of the fight 
bites for your time is is just to sit on social media and watch nonsense. I sometimes do it and I tell you that there was a time where I was watching so much stuff on social media that my bank account, I paid for it in, with my bank account, my income dipping, like my income dipped. And I was like, what's going on? Hello, what was going on is that I wasn't actually doing any marketing. I was just focused on watching TikTok videos, being distracted.com. And that ain't gonna bring you the money. So listen, God has made it really clear to me that listen, if you're gonna sit around watching TikTok and watching all these videos, you don't complain to me if your bank account, if your income goes downhill. Okay. Um, he didn't say it directly, but the, in a roundabout way, I got the message that like, like you need to make sure you're, you know, what are you, okay, what were you doing? You know? Um, <laughs> so, and make sure as well, guys, that you're not um, being such a helpful person for others. It's good to help people, but sometimes you can help people so much that you're not actually focusing on your business. Some of you have family members that do not believe in your business. They don't believe in your online business. They don't believe in, in what you're doing. And they're actually trying to, the enemy is trying to use them to hinder your business. They think you've got, what are you doing? Get a job and all this. They need to, you need to block these people out of your mind. Um, obviously, I'm not telling you to cut them off or anything. I just mean like you need to ignore them and you need to do your work. Because if you don't do the work and bring in that 1,000, 2,000, 3,000, 4, 5, 6,000, 7, whatever it is that you want to bring in, you're the one that's going to suffer the consequences. Okay, them rambling in your ear, it's just, you need to ignore what they're saying and focus on your business. Make that money, bring in that bag, focus on doing your, creating your content, your videos, your live streams. Um, Cause well, guess what? When you make that money, you're gonna be able to pay your bills, go out shopping, buy nice things, do all the fun, go on holiday, get your nails done, all those good things. That's what happens when you make that money. And you won't have to have a full-time job. You won't have to have a part-time job if you're making money. But if you're not making money, then you will need to work. You will need to go back and get a corporate job. You will need a side hustle and all of that. There's nothing wrong with a side hustle or an extra job or anything. But it, if you can make the money all in your business, then go for it. Number three, you're not taking in enough inspired action. Now, this could look like you being stubborn and sticking with something that God is done with. Now... Um, oh my gosh, this just reminds me a little bit of just, oh, I can't get this out of my mind. It's so funny. Like I saw this video clip and honestly, I, I could have just laughed and just moved on. But for some reason, I believe I got a message from it. Now, Justin Timberlake made this video and basically he said he was, he was on stage dancing. And normally, you know, many of you know that Justin Timberlake normally is a great dancer. He's an amazing dancer. He used to be in NSYNC. You know, obviously a very powerful boy band, one of the best in the world that's ever lived in the, in the, um, out of all the Caucasian um, pop stars and everything. Very famous at the time of when Britney Spears was, you know, at the top of her game and everything. Well, she's, she's always been at the top of her game, even after the 90s, um, even in the 2000s. Obviously, there was a time when she went through a few things and all of that. But then she got back in the game and went, did the Las Vegas tour and she was just at the top of her career again, right? So, but anyway, with NSYNC, there was, you know, Justin Timberlake, he went solo and did amazing with his solo career. I mean, fire solo career, right? But then there was, but then recently he's been like, obviously performing again. And I think it was last year, that this video clip surfaced where he had performed and he went, he was just dancing, but the way he did it was just really funny because he was like, DC, beat your, I think he said DC, beat your beat. I think he said that. I don't know. I can't, don't misquote me, but I think he said something like DC, beat your beat. And then he was like, and it was like the music's going. Dun, 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 dun. So basically it's the song I'm bringing sexy back. You know, that's the song. And it was like, he just danced and just, but what he did was just, what he danced was just like, no, Justin, Justin, no. Now it was a moment, right? Like, you know, the thing is because he's older now, people can sometimes make those, like those, digs at older people like oh that like granddad moves or dad moves or whatever because obviously he's not the same 25 year old that he was he's not 29 anymore he's not 30 he's now like you know probably 40 some like maybe 41 or something um he might be 40 I don't know how old he is exactly but I think he's about 43 or so and he does look good I mean Justin Timberlake looks fantastic he looked great on stage people were just exaggerating a little bit it's just that he didn't put 150 percent in that performance he probably thought, I don't need to, I've already paid my dues. And I do agree with him, but at the same time, the people are like, no, if you're gonna do it, do it, go hard or go home. 
And so I think he realized that he can't get away with anything. And I think that's happened to a lot of us. That that does help us to step up and become greater. Now, the reason I wanted to share that is because sometimes when God is like, that, that is an example of when, like, if God is like telling you to like give up on something, like lay, lay that thing down. Okay, okay, it's time to stop the singing career. It's time to stop the dancing career. It's time to stop the... Um, you need to you need to stop trying to promote that one on one package. It could be for a season. It could be just for a temporary pause. Maybe it wants to shift your attention, right, to something else. You're trying to make the master cl- mastermind happen. God is trying to make your master classes happen. You're trying to make your speaking career the thing. God is trying to make your coaching business the thing. And you need to pay attention to what is God pointing to you. What do you feel called to focus on in this season, in this time, in this moment? Because if you keep chasing the wind, you know, and so what happened is because it's almost like with him, it's almost like there's two things, right? You can either go go hard or go home, right? Step up your game if you're being, you know, laughed at or if it's not working or whatever. If you're promoting your products, it's not working, then make it better. Like just go harder, right? Or you need to step down and just be like, okay with like, okay, this isn't working. Let me put this on pause. You know, so with Justin Timberlake, it just kind of made me feel like, you know, this is an example of when God is like, I'm done with something. Now, I'm not saying he's done with him. I'm just saying that that's an example of it could apply to any of us. Like we're trying to make fetch happen and God is like, I'm done with fetch. You know, fetch ain't going to happen. Okay, you are not cool on stage no more. Step down. You're not cool with your coaching business no more. Step down. Your book that you're writing is boring. Nobody's buying the book. You know, put the book on the shelf it could be your cd your music it could be you know your hairdressing career whatever it is you know i mean it doesn't mean that it god would never do anything with it but it could be something to consider do i need to go harder or do i need to actually just you know take read the room it's not working like just you know before it gets embarrassing you know And so I believe with Justin Timberlake, it wasn't, I don't think he's called to just quit his career. I think he just needs to just, you know, make sure he just puts in a little bit more effort and I think he'll be good. But I just wanted to use that as an example because sometimes we try to be adamant to do something that God is done with and it really blocks our success. We are so adamant that it must be this book we're promoting. It must be this TV show that we must have it. It must be the podcast, but it's like, no, it could be that you need to just, launch a new app it could be launch a new membership it could be launch some coaching sessions it could be f- freelance photography you need to like you know sometimes you need to just do what you're good at what are you naturally good at just get on with that and sometimes it could just be that you you focus on something where you're not even being paid and that's the thing that gives you the publicity you know so also it doesn't always have it could be something that complements what you do now i'm going to give you an example another example Jenna Kutcher, she is known. She's a multimillionaire. She has got a podcast called Gold Digger Podcast. It's a very famous podcast that a lot of women love. A million. She's, she's had, she's had a, I think she's had about over 100 million downloads or whether it's 10 million downloads. She's, she's had like a lot of downloads, like millions of downloads on her podcast. She's got a book called Are You Okay Really? And um, the book is a New York Times bestselling book. So it hit the New York Times bestseller list. Um, now, many of you probably know her, but if you don't, you, you definitely need to go and follow her because she's got an amazing brand. And um, she said there was a time where she used to be a freelance photographer and she used to focus on weddings. And she said that she got to a point where she was so drained with this. She was so exhausted. And what she decided to do is that, she, you know, she realized that this is just like not working, like I'm exhausted. And she wanted to quit. She wanted to quit her, her you know, quit her whole business. But she knew that she couldn't quit because she didn't have the finances to quit. It was bringing in good money. So she just felt inspired to start painting. Okay, like that was going to be a bit of therapy for her, like a little bit of feel good thing for her. And so she started painting like she was painting, painting, painting to the point that people she would show her work a little bit online. And people were like, oh, my goodness, your painting is your paintings are amazing. Like, how can I buy your paintings? And that began something for her. So she started to literally start selling some of her paintings. I think she sold it on Etsy or, you know, online, right? And people were buying her paintings. She was making, and then she started to make so much money from her paintings to the point that she could cut down on some of her photography work. 
so she could she was selling her paintings and she was selling her photography like basically doing the weddings but she didn't just have to rely on the weddings anymore does that make sense guys can you see how a little inspired action turned into a side hustle like she wasn't expecting painting to bring her money but it did and it relieved her of stress and strain, but it also made her be able to cut down on her photography work, which made it more exciting and fun for her to do the photography work. Now, she doesn't sell the paintings anymore, but it was something that she did for a while, and she talks about it in her book, Are You Okay, Really? So make sure you check out that book. Okay, so number four, you're not educating yourself on how money works. Now, this is a big one. I wanna encourage you to listen to something on money for 30 minutes. I put three, yeah. <laughs> you know, one, two, three. Well, sorry, guys, I actually wanted to, there's no 30. I have not got 30 hands, so I can't use 30 hands. But yeah, 30 minutes a day would be really good. Or even if it's between 15 and 30 minutes, 15 to 30 minutes. So 15 minutes at the minimum, 30 minutes at the maximum, you know, or if you can do more, that would be great. But I want you to educate yourself on money every single day. So this means that you need to be reading books on money, listening to um, books on money. It could be that you're listening to podcasts, to a show, for example, to do with money. It could be articles on money. It could be learning about sales, learning about um, marketing. It could be that you're learning about like how to just anything that's going to teach you how to, um, it could be about economics, right? You could be learning about um for example, yeah, so like how money works, um, financial planning, it could be financial tips, it could be about the economy, it could be about um, anything, anything to do with money that will help you to move forward. So I wanna quickly just share some books that you could read, because um, that's what some of you are not doing. Some of you are not reading anything to do with money every single day. You're not listening to something on money every single day. And that's why your finances are showing not much. That's why your bank account is empty or you're in debt or you are not um, having some financial breakthroughs because you're not understanding how money works. You're not working on your money mindset. You're not learning new things about money and therefore the money is not flowing to you. All right, so I'm gonna recommend three different books um, that you can check out. Number one, The Psychology of Money by Mo. Um, Morgan Housel, The Psychology of Money by Morgan Housel. And then another book I want to recommend. So that book is basically um, about wealth, happiness, and greed, okay? So it's, I don't really, it's not greed in the negative way. I, I don't really, I don't remember anything covered on greed when I've been listening to it. I've been listening, I've been hearing more about the wealth and the um, the success and so on and so forth. But and obviously the happiness, but I need to, you know, cause I've listened to it a few times, but I, I just haven't really, when you listen to a book, there's some bits you won't digest and some bits that you do. So I like to listen to books over and over and over and over and over to learn something new. So I'm, I'm gonna keep listening to this book cause I wanna get another, another aha moment, another epiphany, another breakthrough, another shift, another learn another thing because there's so much to learn in a book. So I definitely wanna recommend that book because it's it's a lot of a lot of entrepreneurs read it and it has changed their financial situation. Another book is The Six Figure Freelance Earner by Laura Briggs. This book is really good because you're gonna learn how to market your business, how to bring in the money, how to speak to clients and how to basically bring in that six figure income, okay? Another book that I wanna recommend is My Money, My Way by Kimoka Love. Now this book, um, this this woman, she was on Marie TV or Marie Folio podcast. Definitely a great interview that you can go and watch on YouTube. Um, I, learned about, I learned about her there and I bought her book and I think it's really good, teach, teaches you about money, about things like saving, um, basically spending, like some ways to spend money effectively. Um, ways to manage your money, look after your money, budget, and all these good things. So those are some books. There's another book called You're a, You're a Badass at Making Money. That's another legendary book on money, which is a really good one. It's very, like, Jen Shinshiro, the author, is very witty and funny too. So you, I'm sure you're going to love that book. I do love it as well. Um, another book that I recommend. Okay. So many of you know as well, the book Think and Grow Rich by Napoleon Hill. And that's another book that's meant to be really, really powerful when it comes to money because he interviewed about 500 millionaires. So that's meant to be another one that's well known, that's very, very powerful when it comes to money. 
Um, okay, so number five, you're not getting enough publicity for your business. This can look like a lack of PR. It could look like you're not doing enough media interviews. You're not getting enough podcasts. Um, into, you're not going on podcast shows. You're not getting press publications, features in magazines. You're not doing guest speaking. You're not making guest appearances. You're not contributing to magazines or blogs, failing to attend networking events, failing to do collaborations or joint ventures with celebrities, influencers, and leaders. You've got to collaborate. You know, making it on your own is not easy. You've got to work with others, connect with others, make um, promote yourself by connecting with others. Get, get in front of other people's audiences. You're not making money affirmations as number six. So number five was you're not getting enough publicity or good PR for your business. And number six is you're not making enough, you're not making money affirmations. So some of the money declarations or affirmations, or even you could even confess scriptures as well. Some of the things that you need to be saying is the money is coming. I attract wealth and abundance. I receive kingdom wealth. Money is flowing into my bank account right now. Money is flowing into my business today. Thank you, Lord, that I'm financially favored. Money is on its way to me right now. I rebuke and bind financial delay in Jesus mighty name. So just things like that, make sure you're saying them, write them down, confess it over and over and over, declare decree and, and, um, you know, basically, um, confess. So let me tell you about my new, my new offer that I was talking to you about. Basically the Lord has asked me over and over and nudged me. He has been giving me um, revelations that I need to put out a new membership for Kingdom Women. So basically, if you're in a place where you need support, coaching, accountability, and, and you want to be around Christian sisters, you want to basically be talking about money and wealth and abundance and just talk about like ways to really take yourself to the next level. If you want to be earning between 1000 and 8000 a month in your business online, and you want to attract more abundance, more bliss into your life, if you want to like travel more, see the world more, um, focus on self-love, self-care, you want to love people more, you want to prepare for your kingdom, marriage, you want to, if you're already married, you want to be a better wife, um, this is the program for you, this is the actual membership for you, it's a low ticket membership, it's like £22 a month to join, or you can pay for six months, and I think that's meant to be £121 or £122. <laughs> So go to the website to go and get yourself signed up. I'm going to just give you the website. The website is www.queenchimamedia.com forward slash luxury wealth love. Okay, go there, queenchimamedia.com forward slash luxury wealth love. Go and sign up because we are starting very soon. When you get signed up, I'll, I will reach out to you and send you the details. The Facebook group is going to open on the 21st of, the Facebook group is going to open on the 21st of December, right? But the actual membership will kick off with the first call on the 27th of December. So you, we're going to get Christmas out of the way. But when you get into the Facebook group, which will open on the 21st, that is going to be the time where I'm going to, like from that day onwards, I'm going to be, you know, welcoming you into the group and just, you know, basically doing some extra bonus trainings and stuff, just little mini live streams and stuff and, and just getting some content in there for you to start preparing you on your luxury wealth and love journey. So what you can expect from this membership is weekly live streams in the Facebook group. There'll be one masterclass a month. There'll be a monthly workbook, two video trainings a month, um, and obviously other bonus content and stuff. And you're going to get like, we're going to have special experts as well, special guest experts now and then in the membership. And there's going to be a private Facebook group for all members for accountability and support. So if you're a Christian woman, a kingdom woman, a woman of God, a woman of a daughter of Zion that needs support in your business to be making between 1000 and 8000 a month or more, I want you to join this membership with yours truly, Queen Chima. Um, so the Lord has given me so many blessings in my business. I've worked with loads of high end clients. I've worked with women that paid me thousands to work with me. I've worked with women that paid me hundreds to work with me. I've had my own beauty pageant business where I've worked with hundreds of girls and women from all over the country in the UK. Um, I have had people attend my events from all over, from different parts of the UK and abroad. Um, I've done lots of international motivational speaking. I've yeah, spoken in five, I'm um, sorry, six different countries. But I've also spoken virtually in Mexico as well. So that's the seventh one. 
done lots of speaking, singing, um, you know, been a beauty queen. I've enjoyed so much luxury. I've enjoyed a glamorous life. I've enjoyed the sort of celebrity-ish life, celeb celebrity-ish, <laughs> a little bit of it. So if you're interested, get in touch. See you in the next